Hello everybody, my name is Alan from CyberLab and today will be another video about OpenMediaVal. This video specifically, we're gonna talk a little bit more about OpenMediaVal set, which is in the stable release, and now you can start to choose to production. In this video, we're gonna explain a little bit how you can update your OpenMediaVal 6 to OpenMediaVal 7, or you always can do a installation from zero, what I suggest you to do to avoid any error, anything. But anyway, you have these two options, but I suggest you to do the update for revision 7, because you're gonna have Debian 12, which has lots of new features, updates, and continue on, and because the OpenMediaVal Java 6 soon will stop to have requires updates and will be obsolete system. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show you in this video, but first of all, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed, and let's understand a little bit more about it. As I told, in this video, we're gonna explain how you can install OpenMediaVal 7, or at least update your OpenMediaVal 6 to OpenMediaVal 7. But before we start to explain how we can do it, you need to understand what is OpenMediaVal. OpenMediaVal is an open system that uh, you can use as a NAS. NAS is Network Attached Storage, what allowed you to create a storage in your network, what uh, allowed more than one use access the data. You can have all your data centralized, so you don't need to have uh, different data in different computers and go for USB copy paste in there. You can have all your data in only one place and everything is centralized there. You can have backup options, you can set up RAID what allowed you to have more than one hard drive, depend what kind of RAID allowed you to lose one hard drive for any reason and you still not losing the data. And you can do much much more and principally with Docker you can have a lot of applications. You can have Plex, AMB, Jellyfin, and all those applications will be used to have your media stream service. And that you can have all LIDAR, Hadar, Sonar, and others R systems, which allowed you to manage your media. So in this way, you don't have only one hard drive in your network. You can have a system that have a multimedia, managing your system, you can have external access and other things which allowed you to have a more robust system and work better. So if it makes sense everything that I told, so now we can come here in my screen and start to explain what it's OpenMediaVal and so after we explain the base, we can go to for the OpenMediaVal website and start to go what they promise you. So here, if you look at my screen, they say what is OpenMediaVal and they say exactly the same as me. They say that's network attached storage based on Debian Linux. And Debian have a lot of updates and a quite a stable system. And at the moment, we are using Debian 12 and that relate for OpenMediaVal 7. Once that go for Debian 12, 13, then we will relate for OpenMediaVal 8 and continue on. And as they say, they allowed you to have SSH access, what you can, in the prompt, run some steps. You can have a Samba and SIF, what allowed you to have access for your data anywhere in your network, or if you configure a VPN, you can have access outside for your network. You can have R syncs for some kind of backups and everything worked quite well, and because OpenMediaVal released lots of updates and based in a stable open system, your system is quite stable, they have updates, and everything worked well. Also, if you look, they say that's run out of the box, what allowed you to just install the system and run it. If you wanted to do all those applications or run all those applications directly in Debian, you can do it, but you need to understand how it works, you need to do a lot of other commands, and that sometimes if you mess up something, it will be really difficult to fix. In OpenMediaVal, you cannot mess up so badly unless you go for SSH and uninstall something that you shouldn't. You can have a web page, you can have a phone management, you can see what is the life of your hard drive with your smart and other things that make its system quite interesting. Also, 
a really interesting thing this system is really lightweight what allowed you to install in a old laptop in an old computer in a Raspberry Pi and it's still working well different for Tunas what you need to have a quite strong system to be able to run the system what it means if you have uh, only 2 gigabytes of RAM memory Tunas will not be the best option OpenJava will run quite easy with 2 gigabytes with 3 gigabytes TrueNAS, you're gonna need to have seven, eight, nine, and depending what size of storage, they will need more. Also, one of the uh, things that I used to like more TrueNAS is because of the snapshot option, which OpenMedia now starts to improve this option, what you can create some automatic settings for backup and other things that make your system more interesting. But anyway, if you come here in download, now you have only two options you can have the stable or the old when you say old will be revision 6 and the stable will be revision 7 you don't have any more beta because it will take some time until debian 13 is really released you will not have any update for the open media file. and here they will go a quick update how you can do it what you need to do you need to come here and download this option and once that you download, if you're going to install a physical computer, you need to use Balena Edge, what will flush it in your USB stick. And if you want to burn a CD, you always can do it. But the USB stick, it's quite easy, and what they suggest you and how to do this installation. Anyway, and what they suggest you, and they'll tell you what application that you can use it. I prefer Balena Edge, but it's your choice. Once that you download, you can start to do the installation. In my case, I'm using a virtual machine just because it's easy for me. So if I come here, I have my virtual machine created. If I come here, my virtual machine put in settings, I can explain a little bit more how I set up my virtual machine. First thing, I get my name of my virtual machine. I say that's Linux and I told that it's running Debian. 64 bits if i come here in my storage what i'm more interesting i have uh, my cd red boot on the system it's running revision 7.0 slash 32 at least at this moment that i'm installing if you go to install in the future potentially will be revision set 7 point something and continue on other thing i create a two storage the first one will be where i can run my open system and the second one will be my storage i don't suggest you to use everything in the same hard drive because the hard drive that you run all your storage it run less often than the hard drive that run open system but the amount of writing and reading for the hard drive that you run your storage will be more often depending how often you transfer data so always use separately hard drives you don't need to be really big 20 gigabytes is more than enough you can use a usb stick and this just will work other thing that i did for this virtual machine but you have a physical computer you don't need to do it it's here in network i put a bridge adapter why bridge adapter this one will simulate that you really put rj45 in your computer and your router and that this just work in my case i need to do it because i'm running a virtual machine what i don't suggest you to do with this open system Anyway, I can come here in OK and I can start this virtual machine, what allowed me to go for the next step. If you are running in a physical computer, please check how you can set up your boot option. Here I can just install or can install shield control. I suggest you just install and put enter. Now they will take some time until you start the process. So once that you go for the next page, that's this one, you can decide what language that you want. In my case, I'll run as English and I will put as a country or territory as United Kingdom and put enter. They will ask what kind of a keyboard that I want to use. In my case, I will use the same United Kingdom. And now I need to wait from then to read all the applications and do the pre-setting. Once that uh, they locate and configure the first stage, they will give another prompt. So let's wait a little bit until this finish. In this first stage, you can run only the configure the network. So to configure your network, you can set up the names of the network. In my case, I will put OMV7 and put enter. Now it's the proxy or the domain that I want to use. In my case, I will leave as local but if you have any reason to put a specific domain, you can set up it. 
Now it's the time that you can set up your root password. It means that if you're using the SSH, you can use this user and that they will have access for everything. Use a strong password because if someone access the root using this password, directly SSH, they will have access for everything in your system, they can delete everything and it's not interesting. So make sure that it's safe and you remember this password. Now they will ask about partition because my hard drives could potentially have more partitions. They will say make sure that you're happy about it and that they will allow me to decide what specific hard drive that I want. So if I come here, I have two hard drives. The first one will be 20 gigabyte and the second one will be 53 gigabytes. So I'll we'll choose the one that have only 20 gigabytes and I will wait for the next step. This step will take a little bit longer because they will try to install everything and that uh, once that they finish, they will allow you to set up what kind of uh, link that you want to define to make all the updates. So let's wait a little bit until they allowed you to go for next stage. Once that they finish you should do this first installation, they will ask for you to manage your packaging. It means that they will look what kind of mirror forget all the updates. So we'll put Unit Kingdom and I'll select the same one, Debian. I don't need to set up any procs, I'll put Enter. And now they will start to download and update or at least configure all my applications. So this one will take a few minutes so let's wait a little bit. Once that installation has been completed, they will say the installation is completed. You can go ahead and put continue. Now they will finish it to do all the last setup, all the last updates, and that they will restart your system. What will take a little bit longer, but you need to wait. Once that your system restart, you can start to Looking for your IP image of all, you have uh, three ways to discover the IP address. The first one, if you look here, they give you the IP address, what it's 192.168.1.102. Other option, you can log as root using the same password that you defined and put IP address and they will give the list of the IP address. And the last option, you can open your router and you can check what is this IP address for the Open Image of 7, the same name that you create. Anyway, I know that is here, so I will use this IP address. Now I can open my web page and open this specific IP address. So let's do it. Okay, once that you have opened this web page, you need to log in to the Open Image of all. First thing, you need to log in as admin and the password Open Image of all. So come here and log in. What I suggest you, the first thing that you do, you need to come here in settings and you need to set up all your settings to understand what the performs. So I select everything and put save. I can close this information and here will give me overview for my system. I don't know why the CPU don't appear, but here's my utilization, my load average and how much RAM memory. If you look without any installation, they use only 400 megabytes. So if you have two gigabytes of run memory, could be enough for run this system. He will show all the services and all the rest of the status that you have. First thing, change your password. So if you come here, change password, you can set up your new password to guarantee that your system is safe. If I come here and save, they will update my password. Other thing, if you look here, you can start to do more configurations. Workbench, you can define the port and how long it will take to out log out. You can set up date, you can set up some notifications. Suppose that you want to have your CPU usage too high, they will give notification. Your file system is too high, they will give notification and continue on. And here to set up, you can set up in this option. You can manage some power and do a lot of things. Really similar for Open Mutual 6, but with more updates or secret system. Now in the network, you can set up this network. I think that you're not going to use so much unless you want to set up some firewall rules or you want to have a proxy configured for it. In my case, I normally don't use, I use a, a NGX proxy reverse and I can have all this information the same way. But it's your choice. In storage, you can define how is your storage. Suppose that you have your hard drive. So here, you can see what hard drive that you have, you can clean it 
and if you come here in file system you can create a file system you have different options of a format what i like more for the open media file is use btfs so i always use btrfs i can select what kind of rate if you have more than one hard drive they will give more options in my case i have only one so i will suggest you to go for single and here i can decide what hard drive that i want and put save once that you put save this first stage is really fast and here i can set up what's the percentage that uh, they will start to give notifications so if i leave 85 until they arrive 85 they will not have a notification but once they arrive 85 they will start to say alan your hard drive it's almost full take care so now i can put save and here i have my hard drive if you already use open media Vault before you know that any modification that you set up you need to come here and apply this modification otherwise you're not gonna work well but okay i explain everything how you can set up a new open media Vault, but you still ask me alan i still have open media Vault 6 and i want to update my system can you help me and the answer is simple yes i can help you to do it i will leave this link in the description what they explain how you can successful update open java 6 to open java 7 and they give the information you can go for open java release update and here will be the two apps that you can run if you run this one first they will update your system and this one will check and fix if i uh, have any bug in this way your open java 6 will be update for open java 7 sometimes happen some bugs sometimes some application is not properly update and continue on this reason that i always suggest you to run a fresh update but if you still want to only update your system you can do it but do a backup because if something happen your data could be compromised or at least all your applications could be compromised what normally i do i go to my docker make a copy for all my stacks or make a backup for my docker and i go to my open java check more or less what configuration that i have and then i do my update a fresh install and reconfigure everything from zero in this way i guarantee that everything's work without any bug without any problem so in this way we're arriving at the end of the video i hope that you guys like the video if you like the video and think that was interesting please don't forget to leave your like Consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed and see you next time. Bye.